bloody but alive. The heroes of our story emerged from the church having defeated the haunted hangman of Hellgate. Taking the skulls of the five unruly spirits that had been terrorizing the town of Missoula, they doused them in lamp oil and stood vigil over the fire till sunrise. Come the early morning light, rode back to the outlaw's roadside grave. Collect the rest of the bones as well, just in case them spirits decided not to stay rested. Not a one of them willing to come full face with a headless hangman of Hellgate the next full moon. When this grave task was completed, fare thee wells were composed, first to Sallow Jack and Sister Mary Margaret. The plan to escort Captain Williams back to his valley abode, with a pit stop to lay to rest one weeping widow along the way. And Jem Freeman paid a visit to the raven-haired Virginia at the Windsor Hotel, where a variety of pleasantries were exchanged. Though Jem longed to stay, one more varmint by the name of John Wesley Harden remained on the loose. So the posse gathered at the rail station with tickets in hand for Deer Lodge, Butte City, and points beyond. Deadlands. Welcome back to the to the sadly final episode of Deadlands Hellgate book one book one uh, let's real quick let's say uh, hello to our players before we say goodbye to their characters um, starting off with uh, we're gonna start with Clayton this week starting off in the role of Clayton McTaggart say hello to the folks Hey everyone, it is Ryan Howard, the host and creator of Rolling Bones with Ryan Howard, playing Clayton R. McTaggart, voted most likely to get gunned down in the street on tonight's episode. <laughs> uh, then we got uh, in the role of Amadeus, Amy Haddock. Hello all, Todd Moonbounce here as Amy Haddock. Uh, I am the one half creator of the Dungeon Jedi Masters. Find me online at Todd Moonbounce. Looking forward to... Uh, Seeing where things wrap up tonight with you all. Uh, and then up on the top quadrant in the role of Bob Morrow. Hello, Hunting Grounds. Thank you for joining us this uh, day for what might be this season finale. I am Bizarre Hands. Right. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. And uh, Cheyenne described, I will be portraying Bob Morrow. Ain't no might about it. This is the last one. I'm putting down this, I'm packing up this green screen and taking a vacation for the next three months. <laughs> uh, and, but before we get to that, playing the role of Jameson Jem Freeman. Hey everybody, howdy. Thank you for being here tonight. I am Candace Magnificent playing Jem Freeman. My pronouns are she, they. Very excited to uh, kind of sew this up tonight. A little nervous, but yeah. what can you do? <laughs> And, uh, of course, it brings it back to me, your marshal, Cheyenne Wright. All right, so uh, I summed it all up in the intro here. Uh, the the events of uh, last week, uh, the, you can, the, your confrontation with a, with a haunted hangman of Hellgate, your, your victory over them, and uh, you learning that John Wesley Harden had skipped town in the, uh, while you guys were off digging up the, the bones. To, in order to put this uh, horror to rest once and for all. And uh, Clayton is getting ready to hop the next train, the next Iron Dragon train to Butte in order to uh, deal with the 
the, his most driving concern. Uh, and he's asked the rest of you to accompany him. And uh, I believe some of you may, are, are interested in doing so, but others are a bit more reluctant to do so. Um, who is the first to arrive um, after Clayton at the, at the rail station? That's going to be me. I said goodbye to my lady fair. Okay. And uh, I'm ready to hit the road and stir up some trouble. All right, so... You see uh, Clayton waiting at the, the train station. Um, train, the uh, Iron Dragon train is uh, bound to arrive and then sometime in the next half hour or so. He's, you know, itching to get on it and get out of town. But, uh, you have any sort of conversation while you're waiting for the rest to show up? Yeah, as I walk up, uh, I see Clayton standing there and uh, kind of take a deep breath, knowing that this is going to be like a moment uh, for us. Like it's we're going to head out into uncharted waters. We've re- we only really explored this area. Um, and I say, uh, hey, Clayton, good day out to uh, have an adventure. Huh? Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Nothing we can't handle after all this madness. I just hope the other boy is coming right out with us. Me too. Still, if it's just two of us, should be more than enough to take down John Wesley Harden. <laughs> he gets me there. I like clap. I clap him on the back. <laughs> Put my arm around him like you guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who shows up next? It's our timeline marshal post uh, events at the church and thing. What, this is another day or two, yeah? Yeah, yeah. This is um, the morning after the morning. Uh, the, so you, you fight through the, the um, you fight that night. You the next morning you you, know, you 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 burn the skulls and by morning you ride out and get the, the bones. Uh, you bring them back and you burn those and get them taken care of, but. And by the time you find about Harden, you got to wait another day before the uh, the train becomes available to get, okay. get you there. So uh, okay. you got like so a probably full day. wouldn't. Yeah, but probably wouldn't make sense back and forth for for myself to go back to the farm. Well, when you um, went when you went out to uh, take care of the uh, the bones, you certainly yeah. had paid a visit. Got a, yeah, got a yep. chance to pay a visit then. Um, that and it, just in regards to showing up today, I guess. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, so probably so it would have stayed in town in that regard. So um, probably wouldn't have been too far behind uh, any of the others. So probably showing up here. Um. Um. Okay. So, uh, so I mean, there is some question about the wounds you guys sustained in the uh, in the church. Um, you were patched up some by the uh, by by the ones you sustained at, during the fight. The other ones were hang were held over from uh, the day before, I believe. Right. And mm-hmm. it takes five days before you get a chance to, to heal up. So okay. It, so those ones are gonna stick around for a little bit longer. Uh, I will. I mean, all things compared, three days have gone by. If you wait two more days, you get a you get a healing roll, but it's a case of do you want to wait two more days and let Wes and possibly let what let Harden slip through your fingers. Hmm. All right, so uh, I guess uh, Haddock saunders up as the two of you are standing there, uh, just as the conversation begins to lull. See, uh, let me kind of catch this. Uh you know, brotherly embrace that uh, I've probably had from Jim many a times in the past. And, um, you know, maybe a little outwardly somber as I approach, but morning. How are you guys Amy. doing? After all the trouble that I've caused for you, all the damage I've done to you, Half didn't expect you to come out here. Well, uh, hell, I wouldn't have held it against you if you hadn't. I need to at least say goodbye, yeah. Where would, be, where would my manners be if I didn't? What's your uh? 
What's your travel time looking at here? Well, hopefully the train will be here soon. Do we know, uh, like, how, how long until the next train at this point? About half an hour. Okay. You fact, just, uh, you can, it's it's pro you can probably be see the first plumes of smoke through the hills off in the distance at this point. Y'all know anything about these iron dragon fellas? No, I'm a, a uh... the railroads new to all of you folks. It just came through last year and long before you guys ever got back. Um, if you spend any time in Deadwood, however, you would know a little bit about the Iron Dragon. It's the only rail line that works through uh, through the uh, Sioux Nations, um, and they have a spur that goes right out to Deadwood. So. Gotcha. Probably have some more time myself to observe. Uh, Clayton? As much as I want to just run home to the farm and Hang up the rifle. I know you're itching to get out after Harden. And I suppose I can uh, come along for one last hurrah. But uh, after that, I think it's coming back home. I see, uh, I see Amy looking all somber and having this conversation with Clay. And I just kind of jump on his back. And like take his hat and like spin it around and get real. <laughs> I'm real extra. And I'm like, listen, we got some great compadres. We gotta, we kinda owe it to them to go out there and, you know, sew up this adventure, Amy. I know you loyal, but Mama Haddock's farm's gonna be there when you get back. I know. And uh I owe all of you plenty for for helping out to keep it that way, to be honest. So I can do this one more. But Clayton, you're setting up camp. I reckon that's a fair trade. Where's Morrow? Speak the devil, and he appears. I think Bob showing up last would be would be fitting, given how he appeared within that first episode. Mm -hmm. uh, as well, there's two things that I might want to get done in the intervening days. All right. Um, we may not need to put screen time towards them or not. No, no, I mean, just what, um, yeah. where, where, where are they? Uh, uh, we'd mentioned collecting the bones. I assume that meant the Weeping Widow, but there was also four Northwest Mounted Policemen. Oh, uh, uh, the... You, bur you took care of... You buried them. Those Mounties. You, you, you buried uh, them out there um, on, right. when you rode through the first time, and... Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, Bob had, had committed to not just burying them properly, but providing them with uh, uh, proper markers. So as we, oh, okay. uh, like if we go collect those bones for the Weeping Widow, he would uh, be taking up some uh, hopefully stone markers of some kind to mark their graves. The 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 we the plan with the Weeping Widow is actually um, the Mary Margaret was going to ride out there and do a and do a. Uh, uh, ceremony to to put her to rest. There's no indication of how old that spirit is, and and where those bones might actually be coming from. Um, uh, okay, right. Uh, so the so, so the bones were strictly the, they were about the hangman, the sac. Yeah, the sac. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. But um, you can certainly um, finagle getting um, some headstones uh, started for the taken. The, okay. I mean, it'll, it'll take a few days North, North for them. Policeman. Yeah, it'll take a few right. days for them to get ready, but. Okay. Uh, Mary Margaret's mission is much more important. So, that, yeah. yeah, that can happen first. Uh, also, checking in at the theater uh, with Mr. Bandman. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do that on screen or not. I think we did that uh, last week. Or, um, I mean, yeah, that conversation and, and, with them. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and basically his instructions were to let us know what we find uh, as we move west. Yeah, uh, well, uh, he um, and he, I, you I, mentioned I the uh, the. Yeah, go ahead. 
Uh, just confirm again that the three I'm traveling with, their metal's been tested, and uh, I trust it to be true. Which is well. I'll keep an eye on them. You are the field agent. I trust your opinions. Uh, otherwise, we've. Otherwise, um, Aunt Rose wouldn't send you out in the first place. I'll make sure that Aunt Rose is well represented as we move west. I'm sure that she would appreciate the work they're doing as well. I'll make sure she knows it. So when you are um, around the time that they're beginning to wonder where you are is when you show up at the, the rail station. You see the other three are there. The train is actually um, can be seen on the tracks now, not just the smoke coming up through the hills, but you can actually see the train coming through um, off, off in the distance, chugging along, gouts of steam. It's a bright um, um, black and gold and enameled emerald color um, steam uh, train that comes rolling through the hills, uh, almost like it's a. Um, you can you can see uh, how it gets the name the Iron Dragon, gouts of flame and smoke and this shimmering scale like color and texture to the sides of the, the dragon as it comes rolling to a stop. Uh, it's it's iron wheels squelching and and steam hissing and clouds of. Uh, of um, white kind of obscure your vision as it comes to a stop in front of you. And then um, about five to ten minutes before they uh, secure everything and passengers on board begin to file out and um, porters take uh, your horses that you want to bring with you and into the animal cars and gently guide them up the ramps and within an hour you're all sitting on the train and as it pulls away from the station. Um, the rhythm of the, of the rails rocking you uh, as you begin to pull slowly out of Missoula and winding through the dark cliff faces of the Hellgate Pass and through the wooded forest lands that you rode through on horseback only a few days ago. Uh, you can make conversation as the trees kind of whistle past you as it begins to pick up speed or you can sit in silence would this train have like a, a bar car on it at all or is it not that yeah. kind of train yeah they probably do all right so Clayton would hold up in there and what he's doing uh, if anyone like came in uh, you'd see Clayton writing a letter. And then after he finishes the letter, he puts it in an envelope and then he reaches in his pocket, pulls out all of his money and sticks it in the envelope as well. He puts the envelope uh, back in his his uh, coat pocket. If you're not necessarily trying to hide this, then all of your all of the other folks there take note of it. Anyone have any questions? I look at the envelope and the letter uh, and the money, and I immediately like sides Clayton up and go, "There, uh, there, Mrs. Clayton, you've been uh, keeping from us, or?" Only, only time I've ever seen a man spend money like that is on somebody pretty. Fortunately, no. There ain't a Mrs. Clayton. Never really settled down anywhere long enough to find me a good woman. Now that... That's for my ma. She's still alive. Jim, if for some reason I don't come out of this and Harden decides to spare each of you, or any of you. Take the train back east, go all the way to Charlotte, and ride about 25, 26 miles northwest. Get to a little tiny town called Dry Pond. 
If my ma's still alive, that's where she is. No problem. Have the best, best intentions and the best uh, thoughts in times like these, my friend. If I die, Mama's the only McTaggart left. All my brothers died in the war. My pa too. We're just gonna have to keep you alive, ain't we? And I kind of like rib Amy. Well, I've been uh, pretty good at taking everyone out uh, comes at us. So you just sit, sit around like you've been doing, Clayton, and look pretty. We'll be fine. Give him a wink. I'm going to try to take him down myself. But if he drops me first, none of you hesitate to shoot that bastard in the back. He deserves it. <laughs> I'll just save one last breath to... Outlive them and hopefully won't get that far. We'll get your man. We got, we got Moro and his magic lasso. I don't think uh, we're gonna have no trouble with some John Wesley puffin stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real man, and real people are exactly what. I'm not used to going up against. All right. He may yeah. look like a it's real here. man, but he's all devil. I'll tell you that much. From what I've seen, you are nothing if not a sack of chilies and pistols. <laughs> 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 That's some kind of northern saying I ain't familiar with. <laughs> Well, <laughs> uh, don't do this much, I but know, uh, Clayton, you're getting a Benny for that. Uh, <laughs> I realize Clayton, I, you are, are you being, I know that you're me you to do it, but but if if Mom's gonna be the last McTaggart, is is he worth it? Clayton exhales. Clayton's always smoking a cigar, so I imagine there's cigar smoke there. Morrow, I've been trying to figure that out this whole time. Fact of the matter is, I won't know till I'm standing there across from him. Every instinct tells me that it's my job to put that man in the dirt. But after everything I've seen, everything I've been through, hell, what I said to Virginia. Be careful, Clayton. Pride comes before the fall. I just don't know if that's the man I'm supposed to be no more. I don't know. My experience, Clay best place for a man to figure out who he truly is is on the road, so you at least halfway there. Uh, and you're listening to your gut and you're willing to keep on thinking until you get in front of him. Can I refresh that? I don't know that we can Bartender. ask anything more. Yeah, sure, I'll take another one. You're standing there. You realize that there, there's been a guy kind of, like, standing here the whole time, kind of, like, wiping down the bar, kind of politely not overtly listening to any of your conversations, but present the whole time. Something odd about him, or is this... He's just the bartender. Uh, he looks. He looks at the, the the rest of you and he says, "So, um, 
How far east you folks heading? Just a butte for now. Well, long then. I, I motion to give me two fingers of whiskey while I kind of listen to the conversation. Or is a little for you? Not so much a gold mine. Don't get much of that in a uh, butte, I don't think. Your lodge. I can see that. Do well, I get a sense that he's, is he kind of listening in, in, in almost rudely or anything? Being nosy? It is a bartender's job to be a okay. little aware of the conversations going yeah. on around him. I'm going to lean in and just say, you can hunt anything that's breathing. Take your word for it. Ain't one to tussle with a man like you. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, sir. With all the men I shot in this life, don't recall many of them being bartenders. We are a valuable com commodity in life. Um, folks know that, uh, Weren't us, they'd have to reach uh, for the ball. And that's just a little too much work for people. I'll drink to that. Me too. Trying this. People tend to not notice or, you know, when it, when a person in my line of work is around, we become uh, part of the wallpaper, you might say. Other times when it's just one man and another, you become the dearest best friend you ever had. Tell you all your stories. Don't mean to step into your conversations, however. We're uh, offline. That's, I think, what's going on. Oh, yep. we're offline? In okay. Okay. Yeah, I see some other channels are fine. So it's on your end. Uh -huh. Okay. No problem. <laughs> well, I wasn't planning on making it a very long one, so if we have a lot of issues, then, uh, uh, oh, are we back? Are we live on the air? Hey, folks. All right, so the uh, last uh, where we cut off, I'm not sure exactly where we cut off, but uh, having a conversation with on the, on the drinks car, on the train, on the way to Butte City, and uh, bartender. Uh, conversation just started up with the bartender there. And I believe the last question I was asked, I don't know if it was on air or not, was, uh, I guess you hear a lot of secret. The bartender says, well, it all depends. Sometimes you're just part of the wallpaper, and sometimes when it's just myself and one passenger in an empty car, you become priest and best friend and long lost uh, confidant. You hear all the stories. How long have you been on this route? Oh, well, uh, this route's only about a year old now. Oh. Uh, but I've been on it the most trips out west and east. Um, been working on other trains longer than that. Good way to see the country. If you can, you know, don't mind the bullets flying overhead. They're been robbed? No, but things were pretty ornery for a while while we were built while they were building the railroads. A lot of shooting at each other, a lot of fighting over who had the right of way, that sort of thing. 
well, maybe there's been a one or two uh, hang-ups, but it's safer than you think. Safest way to travel. Gotcha. Now, I don't want to get you in too much trouble here, but I just got to ask. Mm -hmm. You ever you know, have any encounters with the management? Uh, about what you mean uh, the Iron Dragon Railroad? Yeah. Well, can't really say that, that I recall. They pay well. That's one of the reasons why I signed up with the Iron Dragon. Pays better than most of the other trains. Treat the folk good. I suppose it's all the gold, but that's usually the stuff heading west. Eastbound train. From what I hear, they pretty well established out in Butte. Ever heard of a man named uh, Harden or possibly Swain doing any work with the Iron Dragons? Well, can't say that I do. Don't usually ask for names, though. Folks don't usually give them. It's like confession that way. I don't know about you boys, but I ain't never seen a priest look like this. <laughs> yeah. Probably for the best. Met a few who drink like this, though. Here's that. Pours himself a shot. The things we've seen the past few days, I don't think that caused any man to turn to a bottle. Do tell. If it's an interesting story, I am a collector of sorts. Oh, not one for confessions, of course. Understood. There have been a few trains that have left uh, Missoula, headed out east past few days. You heard anything about what's going on there? Out of Missoula? I heard that there was uh, some sort of um, gang running r roughshod over the folks there. Some sort of lynch mob or something. Oh, that's one way to put it. Let's just say that we took care of them. Because, well, uh, I'll buy you another round if you want to tell me the story. I kind of look at everyone like, should we? I take my hat off and I tap the bar, motioning for more whiskey. And I go, proceed. And maybe I missed it, but did did the bartender say he if he had info on Harden? He said he doesn't take collect names. He said he uh Okay, that's what it was, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. But uh one of the things that's very important to do in Deadlands after you've accomplished a great and powerful evil is to tell the tale. Uh, one person takes the role of the story t uh, of the uh, of the tale teller and other the other members of the posse can assist them on that role and in, in, uh, successful tale telling can lower the local fear level and earn everybody uh, an extra Benny in, in the process. Ooh. Would one of you like to tell the tale of the hanging uh, hangman of uh, Hellgate. As you ride through the Hellgate Canyon on your way between Missoula and, and Butte City. I'm fine with telling, uh, but it looks like I think Jem might also be interested in telling, so I, I'm fine to back it up either way. Don't let Jem tell the tale. It's <laughs> mostly going to be about chicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, it's multiple side of the story here. Yes. Well, uh, I would, you're going to want to tell. I'd be curious I'll add for... it. I'd be curious for uh, Amadeus's 
take on it as well, local boy. Uh, I do believe that wasn't there. Yeah. I thought I heard that uh, Amadeus had a uh, sort of I an didn't. interest in that sort of thing, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, I did not get the tale telling edge though. Thing. Yeah, so anybody can tell the tale. You just get a, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, uh, you know, as a as a bit of a musician as well, you know, definitely a form of storytelling there. Um, mm -hmm. I will be asking for a performance role mm -hmm. at the end of this to uh, see how well uh, your tale goes over. And in the process, as you tell the tale, uh, uh, tell the tale, um, anyone else can jump in and use one skill of their choice as long as they can justify how they're using that skill to enhance the story. We're going to do a good old little... You know, I'll bust out the guitar and a little soft accompaniment to kind of go along this. And, uh, yeah. Um. When, you, when he sees you bust out the guitar, he's like, well, it looks like I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> we arrived in Missoula. Ahead of the sack man, sack men. And... The frightened town folk asked us to do all that we can to rid them of this evil, rid them of this fright, and hold up in a church. We were able to survive the night. I kind of nod so to my counterparts as. Mm -hmm. Almost leading the, yeah, handing off the baton. As Amy is kind of going in, um, I would like to, like, Jem is, Jem is a couple drinks in now, and uh, they're very much still in there. I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows it, frame of mind. I can, so. still, I, I can still feel <laughs> that kiss. Yeah, so flying high. Yeah. Um, so I think that, that, that I would be doing like not in, not like a dance per se but like interpretive hand motions and like acting <laughs> out things that are happening so amy's like sackcloth men i'm like Ugh. it's like <laughs> love and romance i'm like yes i'm just doing all his i'm like his hype man it feels like a per, uh, performance role <laughs> not athletics uh I'm jumping a lot, aerobic <laughs> exercising. <laughs> All right, give me athletics. <laughs> I knew what you were going for, but it still felt more like a performance. Than there, a... There, there's a line or two in the song that I talk about some some feats of strength or whatever, and and Jem lifts up uh, lifts up a table just to represent <laughs> this. And... Okay. Yes. Yeah. Give me a, 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 that athletics. It's taking a minute to come up. It's, Sorry, it's, I see it popped up now. Is it popped yeah. up for you? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Roll is taking forever, however. Wow. Yeah, we are getting some uh, congestion on the interwebs tonight, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want me to click roll for you? Yes. Okay. okay. So you just had three cards pop up, so. Yeah. Hey. There we go. That's a. Uh... Oh, geez. Then more and more cards. Okay. All right. So Sorry. getting rid of getting rid of these old ones here. Whoa. whoa, whoa. What are those other Whoa, dice? What's going on? Let's go. Those must be the other rolls there. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm getting rid of all the ones, but the, uh, except for the one I rolled. Um, so nine, that's a, that's a hit and a ray. So that'll be a plus two to the final tale, tale, and tale. Um, uh, and as the story continues, how does uh, Bob Morrow interject? himself into the the tail and what does he do to the enhance? shots ring out fast and quick and fast and from mr morrow's guns they came with a glowing blast okay what do you, what does nice morrow do serve. what does morrow uh, do in order to show off Bob, and age the tail 
Bob leans in. He hasn't actually been partaking of uh, the rye whiskey that's been been served up because mm-hmm. they're after uh, a human target. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he does lean in and makes eye contact with the the bartender. Now you've ridden the rails. You're not collecting any names, but you hear stories all across these lands. Now there was no, there was no coincidence coincidence about us being in that church. And come dawn, we collected some bones, we collected the skulls, and we set fire to them to make sure that this story was over. Now, if you've heard enough stories, you might know why it was important to do that. And maybe I don't need to tell you anymore. So are you looking to use a uh, occult here as your uh, as your skill to enhance the tale? Uh, wouldn't mind doing so if, if All right, that, if sure, feel free. Did you tell the, 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 the dark truth about ghosts and spirits and such creatures? Nice. Little All right, that is, yeah, that's that a is... That is a... Plus four be, before we tell tales. Yeah, plus four. Uh, Clayton want to get in on that action? Yeah, so Clayton uh, leans in and says in kind of a rough whisper... Clayton, his gun so fast, but often coming up short. It's okay, he was there for moral supports. <laughs> that was a little stiff. <laughs> anyway. These fellas make it sound like something out of a dime novel. Something they'd read back east about what we do out here. Let me tell you, this wasn't no ordinary gang we was dealing with. These was creatures walking amongst the living 20 years after they'd been put in the grave. And brother, believe me, they looked it. They had the scars of the lives they left behind and the deaths that put them in the ground. I fired 12 rounds from both of my guns and they went right through them. Emphasizing the danger and the spookiness of this all. Mm -hmm. Going for an intimidation roll? Yes. I put down many a man, but it took more than this man to put him down. All right, so that is a success, which adds another plus one to the total. Now, uh, the roll, uh, you are trying to counteract the effect of a fear le- of a f- level four fear level, which is minus two to this roll, but it's... Okay. Offset by the bonuses you have acquired, you're still going to be making that tail tail and roll at plus three, which means only uh, you'll only fail if you critically fail <laughs> this tail. And so, my friend, that is the end of this tail. As story of Hellgate come to go backwards. And so that's the end of this tale, my friend. As the story of the Sackman of Hellgate comes to an end. Alright, so performance plus three. Plus three. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeehaw. 13. But as you as you wrap up the song, you uh, uh, the rest of you look around and you notice that the the uh, the drink car is 
has a lot more people in it than you remember when you first started telling this tale. Uh, folks wandering in and leaning in and just listening, raptured to your story as you tell this tale. And, uh, and as he winds up the crescendo of the guitar and finishes the story, um, there is a there is a gasp and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a brief stunned silence. And then a round of applause echoes throughout the, 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 the drink car. And then and the, and the bartender says, well, that is something. I'll tell you, that's one for the history books. Huh? I'm going to be passing that story along to every person I meet along this road. That is a tale worth telling. And the fear level drops by one you just feel a certain um calmness kind of uh spread through the uh through not just the the car but in some way uh the whole environment just seems more pleasant. The the valley seems less shadowed, and uh, the mountains seem less looming over you as you break through the line of trees out into another a wider portion of uh, the Hellgate Valley, and you can see golden sunlight uh, peeking peeking in through the windows of the, the train car as you go click clacking your way through uh, uh, down the rails. And eventually there's a there's a brief stop in the town of Deer Lodge, which is a bit bigger than you imagined it to be. It's uh, you've, uh, apparently this is the uh, county seat for the area. And there's um, and home to the Deer Lodge to tor- territorial prison. Anybody who gets thrown uh, gets uh, thrown into any sort of uh, convicted of any sort of major crime, this is where they do the time here, is, is in the town of Deer Lodge, in the, in, the, in the penitentiary that they have here. And uh, it's the train doesn't spend long may, here, maybe only about an hour or so to unload and load up and before it rolls off again, heading, turning sharply south, and then down through a bend through the, around the mountains th- there, and you can see the town of Butte come rolling up as um, through the windows. Town is a um, fairly open, f- uh, kind of wide and sprawling. There's there's a large portion of the town that looks like you, any other frontier town that you've seen along your travels. But there are other there are parts of it as well that are a uh, vast tent city of people camping it throughout the edges of the town that you see almost like a rows and rows of tents and and uh, any place where there's a stream or a, a creek where the, where people can be panning for gold there is a tent alongside it as well um, in addition to you can see warehouses and and work crews and uh, dig uh, people hauling loads of ore and and dirt and uh and wear wheelbarrows and in and out of uh, holes dug in the sides of the mountains and digging up you know digging holes just right out in the the open dirt of the uh of the area the place is sprawling to say the least train pulls into the station with a hiss and you hear the conductor call out Butte City! All passengers for Butte City! Disembark! They're playing our song. And uh, so with that, you folks uh, hop off the train. And into a very lively midday um scene in this this town of butte um streets are packed you thought missoula felt big and and um busy but um it only really seemed to pick up after hours you know along the front street back in missoula 
Um, Butte seems like um, the, qu the quintessential description of a boom town. There are people moving in all directions constantly. You uh, um, you feel that you actually get um, easiest way for you to get into a fight would be to stand still in Butte City. So here you are. Yeah, I have to figure out what your what your next move is now. Clayton, other than Butte City, do you have any other leads? Any other thoughts? All I can figure is tastes. All I can figure is Harden's either out here hiding or he's trying to find himself more work. In the past he's well, really done any job that involves killing men. He could be an enforcer for the railroads. Hell, he could even talked himself into deputy sheriff by now. I've seen him do it before. Well, you did it. Can't be that hard. <laughs> Slap him on the back. Hey, only another day or two of this. I'll be out of your hair. Hey, I want to say, though, I said it early. I appreciate what you guys have done, but telling that tale back there, I haven't played a tune like that in a long time. I always, always played to try and escape. This time I played for, for fun, enjoyment. And so, appreciate that. All we did is add a little local color, Amy. You've always been so talented. Maybe we can uh, get one more little performance in before we leave town, make sure our names are in everybody's mouths. Until then, why don't we start by, I don't know, maybe asking around? Clayton, anywhere you think he might be just to hang up his hat a while, R&R? &R? One thing he likes more than killing folks is playing cards where we can find that he might have gambled recently. Might be able to pick up a trail there. Um, Is he the winning type or the losing type when it comes to cards? If he's losing, there's bodies in the street. Shouldn't be too hard to find then. Who, um... We'd like to take the lead on uh, just kind of like asking around for a good gambling location that sort of thing i think bob would be pretty keen to step up and right. look into those different sorts of places he might All right. same rules as i did before when asking uh, about um when asking about uh hunting down clues and a mystery and that sort of thing you're not gonna not find the information you're looking for what, you, what it is, is this role is how subtle you are in asking for that information. The better you do, the less um, the people you're looking for are going to hear about it before the, before you find them, so to speak. The worse you do on this role, more likely you're going to ask exactly the wrong person or make a just enough noise that the, that Harden's going to be put on, uh, on alert before you guys can track him down. All right. How low can we go? Under this radar? <laughs> um, is it a persuasion or performance or? All depends on it's. It is. It depends on your tactic. If you are okay. politely asking around, um, you can. You'd be rolling persuasion. Um, you're, you're a gambler, if, aren't you, Bob? Uh, I certainly usually, am. If, if usually, if, uh, um, you can say that you'd like to grease some palms. Which will mean that you get to add a uh, a plus one if you, uh, but it'll cost you a d6 in dinero. Uh, or right. if you want to roll, if you want to get a plus two, it's two d6 in dinero to get a little bonus to your roll. Um, and if, however, you wish to uh, rough people up and use some intimidation to get the information you're looking for. Then that's a different system, which will, uh, but I, that doesn't strike me as a Bob Morrow sort of thing. 
that's yeah, that's not Bob's tact. Uh, <laughs> but gambling certainly is. So if he can sit down at tables and make it clear that he's no. Well, first you gotta so find a table. First you gotta right. find a table. Okay. Very well. Um, then I I reckon he would be digging in with uh, politeness. Then. Okay. Uh, he he's asking around. Are you gonna grease any palms, or are you just straight up asking? I think I think he can grease some palms. Okay. Put on yeah, a plus smile. one. Uh, You're looking for a plus one or a plus two. Let's take a plus one for uh, okay. D6 denaro. Ooh. Six bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's not that great at haggling. Uh, he is not. All right, you get a plus one on, the, on your persuasion. All right, we will take that because we kind of need it. There we go. Well, uh, that is a six. So that's a success. So um, with a success, but not a raise, um, you ask around and if, um, uh, and you are, your questions uh, seem, uh, go not unnoticed, but you know, you're not asking for Harden specifically and uh, uh, you don't draw a whole lot of attention to yourself. So, right. you know, and you and you are directed towards a place called the C Copper Creek Saloon. Copper Creek. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm and prepared you... to be the face man stepping in there. But mm -hmm. if uh, compatriots want to help out in the investigation, like if I can run distraction while we take a look around and see the other players, he's happy to put on a little bit of a show at the table. Win, lose, tantrum or not. Um, well, but I recommend actually, we all head there. Well, actually, yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, you make it to the, uh, you go wandering through the, the this uh, beehive of a, of a city here, uh, of dodging mule carts and, and laborers and, folks uh, moving in all directions. Uh, you see um, uh, a real cornucopia of humanity as you as you go through. Uh, workers from all around the world. Um, apparently, you know, uh, not minding each other and not, not causing a fuss, just trying to get the jobs done and make a living for themselves. Um, it's a real... Uh, you feel a real sense of pride in Americana and as you walk through this place. And this is the, this is the true dream of what uh, this country can be. This is the future. Uh, um, and you make it to the eventually find in this ramshackle, rambling two-story building near the center of town. Um, it's not what you would call opulent, uh, but it is. Um, but what it lacks in decor, it makes up for in uh, sheer charm. It is covered. It, it, you can tell that it has been um, built up and expanded upon in several different occasions by several different architects over the year. It is made up of all sorts of different bits and pieces and so many peaked roofs and dormer windows and additional rooms added on just to make it a little bit bigger because they run out of space yet again. Um, the Copper Creek Saloon just seems to... You wonder if it's named after maybe a river that used to be here or the way it sort of sways and creaks in the wind as you approach it. Um, but it is um, primarily built from logs, but a lot of the other portions of it. You can see the central building was once a log cabin, but all the other bits that have been added onto it over the years are, are of a better quality materials. Uh, obviously, maybe it's been here since the start of the town, but then as uh, building product supplies got more plentiful and available, they, they use those for all the additions and none of it matches. But you come, uh, but you, uh, you, 
you slide on in uh, from the from the hustle and bustle outside into the into the saloon proper. All right, so you found a place. Now we'll need to find a place at a table. Yeah, you can see uh, there are several tables around the place uh, where people are playing cards and you can see the, where they're wagering all sorts of things between, you know, uh, cashy money, coins, and even some people that are just straight up throwing pea-sized nuggets of gold on, uh, into the pot. Wow. Sounds like some reconnaissance is in order. Bob will head on up to the bar. If everyone else wants to come along, or anyone else wants to come along, he'll use that as an excuse to weave in and amongst, check out the games that are happening, assess those stakes, and... Wow. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely no there are... with you, so... All right. Hey! Um... Feller that it seems to be kind of like managing the place as you walk up toward the bar. Very, the very tall, thin feller. Um, and he kind of looks at you and he says, "Howdy! You off the train?" He looks Just at a now. looks at a pull out a pocket watch. Usually takes them about that long to get here. Welcome, welcome to the Cockfer Creek Saloon. My name's Tim. How can I help you? You looking for rooms? Fifty cents a night. Not just yet. We might be sleeping on our feet. But uh, tell me, Tim, once the uh, time enough passes for us to get here, your prices on whiskey go up, or can we expect the same thing you might have charged an hour oh, ago? Oh, oh, no. Same price. Price is the same for everybody. All right. Uh, hey, now we easy don't drink with the what... merchandise! <laughs> I'd rather not be drinking what everybody's be be drinking, but uh, if you've got any of the good stuff, rye whiskey for myself. Good stuff. And, well, I'll see what I can dig up. Mr. Fancy here wants the good stuff. There's, <laughs> there's some laughter from the other end of the bar. Also looking for a seat at a table. Uh, five well, card. He looks around the table and he goes. Gus, you ain't bought anything in like an hour. Give this man your table. I kind of like, I don't want to hear nothing out of you, Gus. Kind of just stares the man down. He goes, all right. <laughs> Gets up and stumbles, stumbles out, of, out of the local. The, huh? Is Gus a bit of a local there? Oh, uh, you asking the bartender? Yeah. Yeah, he goes, yeah, yeah. Been here most of the time. You know, taking up space. I, I kind of turn towards him and say, Gus, if you don't mind being extra cozy, I might be able to squeeze you in. He stops as he's kind of shov shoveling towards the door and he's just like, yeah, I'm going to sit with my new friends. He kind of walks back to the table and kind of sits down and just kind of stares at Tim. Bob will nod back to Tim <laughs> as if he should serve him up uh, something as well so that he's purchased something more recently than the hour or two he's been loitering. Seems to be like pure, he's, he's, he's happy to sit with you guys out of pure spite. <laughs> as Clayton's well, like, have Go ahead, Clay. Oh, just as Clayton's lighting up another cigar and, and getting a, a whiskey, uh, he'll kind of look up at Tim and, and say, uh, so uh, tell me, train came in from Missoula a couple days ago. Anyone new come in here? Anyone uh, particularly interested in the high stakes games? His, oh, man. Um... We get a lot of folk come through here every day, you know, every other day whenever the train comes rolling in. Actually, every day when it depends on which direction the train's going, right? It comes comes in here. Let's see, days uh, 
you probably came from came from the west right yeah yeah it's odd number of days the train comes in from the west even number of days it comes in from the east um we get folks coming through all the time uh, we are a fine establishment of much notoriety in the town of butte if i must say so myself um high rollers though yeah kind of like squints and scratches his head as he looks around and he says not exactly the clientele we cater to here at the crop uh, copper creek um mostly about easy come easy go kind of folk um day workers you know people digging panning out for gold out in the streams that sort of folk if you're looking to lay down some big money probably he go ahead and nod over into uh the um Probably heading out over into uh, uh, the the line. Says. Understood. Mercury Street is. Uh, he kind of points out, kind of you know, vaguely off in a direction. He says, "You know, pretty much any sort of vice you're looking to take care of can be found on, over on Mercury Street. Be it." You know, alcohol uh, or companionship. Elbow gem. I look Ian. up from uh, I and some girl that's walking by like. <laughs> he says, or, you know, they have the, you know, they, they have some places down there that specialize in mahjong and which is sort of like Chinese poker. I'm not really under. I, I don't really understand it myself that much. But uh, but the, you can also pick up a good old card game that, that way too. I mean, they're accommodating folks. Anything if you got the money. Uh, now, if I've seen anybody in particular, somebody you're looking for. Yeah, I guess you could say that. An old friend of mine. Uh. Give me a persuasion roll. <laughs> Reese's palm. <clears throat> that is a four. Okay. He takes notice. You're not sure how much he believes, but uh, old friend of yours. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Old yeah. friends. It's always good to look up old friends. Yeah, heard he came out this way just a couple days ago. Real dark hair, black as coal. Usually with a mustache, though I've seen him without it. Real piercing blue eyes, too. See anyone like that come through here past couple days? He thinks for a moment. He goes, yeah, I, I remember a feller. Kind of matches that description. Um... I kind of remember a couple of fellers that match that description. Got any more? Uh, oh, yeah. He pours a few more drinks for everybody. Well, let's see. Typically likes to wear dark clothes, usually a white hat. You do recall one very distinctive piece of uh, accoutrement that he is prone to wearing. See, does he have, is it a, does he have like pearl handle gun? A special or vest. Oh, right. That he wears. Yeah, the vest. This fella, he, uh, uh, he, he wears guns like I do, but, uh, he, he wears them a little differently than me. He's, uh, Lacks to wear one up, up in his waistcoat, if you know what I mean. Kind of, kind of likes to draw with both hands. Oh, yeah. I remember that feller, Swain or something. Yeah, that's him, Swain. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember him. Came in uh, the other day, asking around for uh, where a feller could um, take a... A uh, mid-sized chunk of uh, money and turn it into a, a real big chunk of money. I said, well, you know, those are hard 
that's a hard question. It all depends on what sort of talent you have, you know. But uh, I pointed him off, Mike, off uh, to some uh, friends I know who who run a regular game. I think over at the um, oh, where, where where was that now? Where was that? And he starts kind of like tapping his finger on the bar, trying to because it's on the tip of my tongue. I just can't quite remember. I'll slide him uh, a couple bucks. No, oh, well, oh, hey, well, how about that? That's that's mighty kind of you, sir. Um, it's always a pleasure uh, dealing with big spenders such as yourselves and your fine friends here. Um, yeah, I, um, I remember the place. There's a there's a um, there's a gambling establishment um, on the line, Mercury Street. Now, mind you, if you're not familiar with the name there. Uh, hang on one second. For some reason, why does the music stop? Get back on that piano. All right. No. Um. Yeah, there is a place not too far, um, a couple streets up from uh, on Mercury Street. If you head out this way, it's called um. It's called the Lotus. The Lotus. Yeah. Yeah. He was looking for a, a little bit of both, you know, or, or he was actually looking for, you know, the the full uh, the full deal, alcohol, cards, and companionship. That little devil's always looking to do some sinning. Gus, you uh play much cards? Uh yeah, 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 I'll play cards. Yeah, I I just can't really get a grasp of it. My, my friend here, Mr. Mouse, he's pretty decent, but uh he's been trying to teach me along. Fancy yourself a hand or two? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, um just what 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 are the stakes? It's tomorrow. Well, we're we're relatively new here, so we could certainly learn no more about about Butte if you if you'd care to to tell us. But I mean, we've also got silver dollars, whatever you care to play for. Silver dollars. It's a bit rich. Uh um, I, I, I could certainly offer my services as a tour guide. I think that could be. Would that uh, be a, a fair, yeah, uh, a, a, a fair ante at least? Sounds reasonable to us, I believe. Okay, all right. Deal them up. You played five card draw before. Oh yeah, sure. Um, who uh, you're gonna gamble for some information here with uh, Gus? Is the is the plan? I uh, think so. Yeah. Why okay. Not? All right. So, um, real quick, um, who, who um, um, just raise your hands. Who is planning to get dealt into the round? Uh, one, two, just the two of you and Gus. Okay. What happens if you're bad? Hey, I don't have gambling skill. Here's don't. how we're gonna work. Come sit down. Yeah, have a seat. Here, here's how it works. Uh, everybody's gonna make a gambling roll. The person. Um, what happens? Uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna set. We're gonna set what the ante is, which is in this case a dollar. Um, the person who rolls the best gets three dollars. The person who rolls the uh, the person who rolls best gets a dollar. The person who rolls worlds worse gets loses a dollar, and the other two people in between, they get nothing. Mm -hmm. They break even. All right, I'll sit down. Yeah. All right. So, uh, real quickly, um, you guys, you, you, and th this covers like about an hour of, of back and forth and chatting and, and playing cards and stuff like that. So. Uh, in that 
in that um, over that time, what do you ask? What, what sort of? Actually, no. Hang on. Let's see how uh, the, how much he how talkative he is by whether or not he's winning or losing or what. Uh, so let's just do the gambling roll first. So everyone, just give me a gambling roll. And Gus is going to just it's going to be a just he's just a D six. Uh, Could say, Bob throw the game to make him a little more talkative, or is the goal to have him lose so that he has to fess up and provide information? You want uh, well, if you uh, now, if you want to, you can throw the game if you want. You don't even have to roll. Uh, you can fold and every hand and, and just give up the money uh, and and assume a, a roll of zero. Um, but. Seeing as how what he, Gus is wagering is his services as a guide, you kind of want to beat we him. We do want to win. Yeah. All right. He rolled a five, which is currently the uh, the high roll on that on on the on the three that people have rolled so far. So get it, get it. Okay, and that's a six. Yeah, so uh, you earn a buck off of Amy, it looks like. Every time, uh, Mara, every time. But I'll hold um, on to this. I'm sure you, you'll be back for it. And Gus sort of breaks even, but which is uh, um, it's still a case of where he's uh, he wins a little and he loses a little, right? After about an hour. And he, so, he's, so he's like, and, and as such, he is willing to, like, answer a few questions for you folks. Like, you know. What are you looking for? That sort of thing. Guess what? Uh, you're new in town. Staying here maybe a few nights. You know, as opposed to maybe just one or two. Um, there'll be a different establishment for that. This is well, you know, the rooms here ain't that bad, but, um, you know, they're kind of crowded. You know, the Tim there he points over towards the bar uh he uh charges 50 cents a room but you gotta share you gotta share a bed with like three other fellers no not much of my style I, i'd say I, I like my privacy in that regard but all right um what a well, I do hear that there are some rather nice establishments on Mercury Street, but I have not had the pleasure of attending. No. Oh, rush up on the car plane and maybe maybe you'll get there one day. Yeah, got to get a little bit more of a bankroll before I go walking in there, mm -hmm. I think. So, in order to afford a night out over that way, what uh, where might where might someone go to get some work? Well, um, you can find a patch of land that ain't being worked. It's kind of up for grabs. You, you know, you can stake a claim and all that sort of thing. Or you can sign up for any one of the the, the mines here in town. Uh, there's the uh, the Clark Copper Mine is a is a always hiring. Now there's got to be uh, something outside of the mine and around town. You know, you got to people got to keep other people in order and and uh, you know maybe take care of those that are jumping claims. Any sort of that. He goes, well, don't get a whole lot of that with the, um... Everyone plays nice, yeah? Well, just... Un I wouldn't say that, neither. Cabbage Patch can be pretty rough and tumble. Uh... He goes, you see the that... Uh, when you're coming in on the town, you see all those tent that tent city and sh shanties and shacks yeah. and whatnot that are set up on the edge of town yeah. well that part of town's called the cabbage patch mm -hmm. and um it's not exactly um uh, you'd say about 50 percent of the the local uh population lives out there you know at one time or another but it is not necessarily patrolled or uh Maintained by any sort of law enforcement, neither. It's a real uh, wasteland as far as justice is concerned. Um, you, hear, you hear all sorts of 
uh, unfortunate things that happen to folks that don't come prepared to defend themselves out there. Be easy for someone to go take advantage of those folks, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, afraid so. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Well. Now, in the town proper, people tend to behave themselves a little bit better. He thinks for a moment. A little bit. Uh, on the line, now they 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 know to really what mind their p's and q's because of the um, the emperor's uh, boys. They keep order over there. Yeah, sometime during the combo, I might nudge Jem and say, "Hey, need a refill. You want to see how our." Our boy Clay's doing? Yeah, I reckon we should check on him. All right. So, um, this is about the time where things are, you know, kind of wind. Um, well, you guys have kind of collected the various pieces of information that, um, you think you'll need. And you can see another, gr uh, a large swell of people begins to pour into the place. Um, and uh, Gus is like, uh, he's like, hey, uh, he, mo he motions to like, as you guys get up, he says, got a few empty seats if anyone wants to join the game. He turns and looks over at Bob and kind of gives him a wink. You and me, buddy. We'll take him. Let me see what we can do. We might be headed to Mercury Street soon. Oh, well, uh. If you want me to watch your hand, I can, I can, I can take over there for you there. Uh, oh, it's... I don't think we need, we need to worry about that, but we'll make sure that your next round is covered here. Okay. We might be back later on tonight. All right. Um, you folks kind of. Uh, seeing the swell of people come in, uh, you realize that any sort of conversation you're going to have to have in here is going to be at probably at a volume that you might not want to have this conversation at. You might want to find someplace quieter to talk. Okay. Yeah, when, when Jim comes over and out of here. When, when Jim comes over and the, the swell of people come in, I'll kind of motion to like, let's head outside. All right, you guys uh, kind of sl slide out of the, uh, you know, make sure that you know bar tab is covered, and then you slide yeah. out of, uh, out of the co uh, Copper Creek and on back onto the street proper. And then what do you say when you get there? Once everyone's outside, I'll, I'll say, uh, from what I hear, sounds like the Lotus might be a place for us to seek our entertainment for the evening. Is that one of the places over on Mercury? Yep. Right. Sounds like, yeah, that's the uh, place for, for deep pockets. Sounds like it's also not the place where you might want to encounter someone that we're looking for. The Emperor's men look after the line fairly tightly from what, what I'd heard. We can lure them towards Cabbage Patch. Things might go a little bit more unnoticed. If you need to do this, it might be a time and a place, and Mercury Street might not be it. I reckon they ain't going to want to make any kind of scene. He's a man on the run, after all, so it might be easier just to talk him down and get him out there like Bob was saying rather than trying to blow holes in that pretty little establishment. Well, he knows me by sight. Second he lays eyes on me, there's no telling what he might do. That being said, he's not a fool. So if uh, Emperor's men have things as buttoned down as everyone seems to think they do, Maybe he won't go for his guns immediately. Maybe we can arrange to deal with this elsewhere. Well, 
Well, we were head... with you. So you head on uh, uh, up the street there to uh, to uh, looking for the this Mercury Street and uh, and the Lotus. As yes. um, all right. So you kind of again you go um, walking through the bustling street of of Butte City, uh, dodging wagons going one direction and and um, people running in the other, and you make your way slowly towards uh, this uh, this other side of town here. Um, give me a notice roll. If you guys uh, start digging around, trying to find the place. Distracted by all the shiny lights. <laughs> Good, lots of tr lots of dice rolling here. What's going on here? How many dice we got? Uh, okay. I'm only seeing uh, four notice rolls here. Yeah, okay. Uh, I see. I got All right, three. so I, I see one person got a success on those notice rolls. So I got a three, a two, a three, and a four. Only one success amongst them, and that's Bob Morrow. Uh, I'll take a plus one. Okay. All right, so that's two, that's two notices there. Um, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit distracted here. I, I do not like the background noise that's going on, and I'm trying to find something better here. Uh, all right. So uh, as you approach the uh, this section of town, you can see uh, it's getting later on into the afternoon, and the 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 decor here of this part of town is a little bit different. Uh, still, you know, this construction still a lot of the same, a lot of what you would see a lot of in any other Wild West town, lots of boxy buildings with big, flat, false fronts. Uh, but the uh, the buildings are painted in these much brighter uh, reds and greens, and there are strings of paper lanterns uh, strung across the town, and the, there's strange car um strange symbols or Chinese uh, con uh, kanji letters painted over a lot of uh, a, lot, a lot of the signs and you know it's not it, everything is not as easily understandable to you folks but you know and where, where it's appropriate uh, you know they you know things are written in both languages you know for you know you see apothecaries and 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 all that sort of stuff but you do spot a, a, a large white building at the far end of um, the Mercury Street with um, red trim and these lotus petals painted um, all, all over the sign with, and, and you can see there on the upper balcony overlooking the place you see a, uh, a whole bevy of some of the most beautiful women you've seen uh, west of the Mississippi leaning on the balcony and wave into the, the folks as they go passing by and then uh, their skin um, um, flawlessly like they're carved out of all different shades of fine marble and and stone uh, just you know they were pretty and powdered and uh, with m some of the most outrageously colorful uh, makeups adorning their face faces Damn. and ain't she a beaut <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not partial to the one in the red myself, Amy. Hattie, I look up and I kind of wave my hat at the ladies, smile a little bit. Oh, when 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 you wave at them, they all wave back very enthusiastically at you, and then they kind of like kind of like gesture towards uh, gesture towards the front door of the, uh, of the Lotus. They don't seem to say or call out to anybody. You know, they're this sort of pantomime. Um, their job is obviously here to stand as like these these almost animated statues on the balcony and attract uh, folks' attention. No matter what happens, gentlemen, tonight is going to be a good night. <laughs> oh, Jim. Don't get distracted. Yet. <laughs> so what, we just going to roll in here and 
Yeah. Go for yeah, it. I'd say so. Yeah. All right. Wasn't sure if you wanted somebody to be lookout. Maybe somebody he don't remember seeing. So, um, as you walk into the Lotus, how would you describe your in um your entrance? Do you do you come in quiet or do you come in loud? Do you uh try and attract attention or do you um try and um stay in the shadows? I'd be looking to just kind of slip in. Mm hmm Not really not really do anything to attract much attention. Okay. Uh, is that those? How about the rest of I'd, you? I'd probably try to follow suit with what Clay is doing, but I'm definitely checking out any and every girl that is in the <laughs> establishment. Like not in a comical way, just in a wow, <laughs> an Owen Wilson wow kind of way. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. In fact, uh, one thing I would like to do. Uh, with my entrance, um, I'm assuming there's there's groups of people coming kind of in and out of this place on somewhat regular intervals. Yeah. I'd wait for a group of people to like come in, and I'd come in with them, uh, okay. just kind of yeah. towards right. the back of a, a larger group. Okay, uh, this place, um, like I said, it appears to be much uh, better constructed. Certainly, this was. Definitely one building purpose built to be what it is. Unlike the the Copper Creek, uh, which is uh, looks like somebody uh, tore down five different buildings and then put the bits to back together. Uh, and in, in any way that uh, you could definitely call like a leaning card, uh, you know, like a house of cards. The uh, the other place, this place, solid and structurally sound. Um, the interior uh, is. Uh, decorated in, in a way that you were not prepared for. It's almost the, uh, the, the it's these deep, rich red walls and um, draperies all over the place, the gold, you know, very interesting uh, Asian uh, gold filigree all over the place. And um, while there's still some traditional banjo music playing off in the uh, someone from someone on a stool over on the on the corner the uh it would give a sort of a western homey feel to the place the, every, the rest of it feels like you're stepping into a foreign land um you see uh broad felted card tables not the the rough and and um ramshackle wooden ones that you see at most of the other uh, uh saloons you've been at uh, with uh fine uh, decorative uh, painting on on the felt and 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 uh official like uh looks like uh, professional card dealers sitting there dealing cards to rows of people uh betting on the, on the cards and the, you can see that the house seems to have taken control of all the local card games and not just card games there's all sorts of other weird um uh, contraptions on tables, big spinning wheels, or in, uh, where people are betting on where a ball is going to land. Along with, uh, uh, you can see towards the back table, a um, uh, bunch of fellers playing some sort of strange game using little clay chips, um, a little um, with strange different figures written on them, and of uh, again foreign nature, which you're not particularly uh, familiar with. And there's a there's occasionally a bit of a, a cheer and a holler that goes up from the group, but for the most part, people tend to respect the general pristineness of the of the place. You know, other than the music that's playing, there's no boisterous yelling or screaming going on in this place. There's polite conversations going on here and there. Mara, you ever get into any of this kind of gambling? This is a little bit above my league, but I recognize a lot of that. There's all sorts of stuff over here. there. The uh, the Celestials are playing. That's uh, that's Mahjong. I uh, I know it well. Mahjong. Well, <laughs> that's that's it. I'm so I'm, mad about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be asking yourself once you play it, but I know it well enough to uh, to not play it for money. I'll tell you that much. 
<laughs> uh, you do see I'm also staying away. You also see that there's a uh, in the the the, uh, the gambling up all appears to be taking place up on these like um, it's it's hard to describe when you first walk into the place. There's sort of a uh, a lower area when you first walk in, uh, and that all appears to be tables and or these kind of plush booths where you can sit down and drink. And then there is a step up on either side or two steps up. And that's where all the gambling is taking place on this uh, like second level. It's not a whole nother floor above the first level. It's just like a l little bit raised up from the, from the, from the area where you're up. And you get the real impression that, you know, it's done to create this feeling of you drink here, you gamble here. And you do not cross those two places. Um, and in the drinking area, you can see that uh, there are many, uh, many folks are sitting there. And if you sit down at a table, you catch this real quick that for any length of time, then one of the fine uh, women in the place will come and sit down next to you and have a drink and uh, engage in polite conversation with you. And some folk, um, after these conversations, are escorted or lifted you know at the shoulder to one of the fine staircases that lead upstairs through, through beaded curtains and they disappear into the back rooms of the of the establishment uh give me a stealth roll clayton as you as you slip into the the lotus That is a three. Take a plus see. one. Uh, yeah, I'll take a plus one on that. Okay. Spend a plus one from the um, the hunting rounds there, and uh, you slide in without any particular um, raising any particular attention. Um, what do you do once you're in? Um, I'm gonna start looking around the the room to see if I spot uh him or anyone who looks familiar uh and and mostly what i'm gonna do i'm actually gonna bypass the the drinking portion and i'm gonna uh head up to where a few the, already both on the train yeah. and in the bar <laughs> the other bar i'm gonna head up to where the the gambling is happening and i'm gonna try and find um uh, on the one of the either one of the women or, or someone else who works there and just, you know, saying hey, any, any uh, 21 tables around here. Uh, you're you know, you're directed to one of the tables where they're playing blackjack. OK. I'll take a seat at a blackjack table and, mm -hmm. and I, I'm I'm going to just kind of keep looking around for uh, any sign of Arden. Give me a notice roll. Unfortunately, you're the only person who could recognize him necessarily. Other people might be able to spot the vest with the, with the description in the party, but they're going to get penalties on that roll. You'll recognize that face the moment you see it. So. Okay. Uh, uh, how how many party bennies do we have currently? Uh, currently, eight, eight says eight. the uh, hunting rounds. Got thirteen plus ones. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll take another plus one then. Okay. All right, so you take another plus one, and with that success, your heart stops for a moment. Because uh, you, you took up the raised platform to the left of, of the, uh, the central valley, and there, sitting at a table, sitting sideways, so he doesn't quite see you just yet, but on the on the opposite valley, the opposite ridge in the Lotus, there's John Wesley Hart. Let's get him. And with that, you can kind of feel the uh, sort of uh, the, the, you, the you begin to like feel the. <laughs> The, the whole rest of the world just sort of slip away and into a, a droning, muffled background noise as you as you spot Harden there from across the room. 
Is he at a poker table? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to kind of motion for Maro. I'll try to make eye contact and, and call him over. Absolutely. If you're motioning for him to come to you, he does. If you're indicating he should sit down at the table, he can do that as well. Uh, just just to have him come over. All right. He f comes on over and stands between you and where he thinks you saw, where he thinks you saw Harden. So, yeah, I'll kind of casually indicate where he is and I'll say tables too rich for your blood or are you willing to go over there and see what you can see? Happy to take a long look take their money too if, if I have to all in the main, name of being convincing I guess he's the one with the vest yeah absolutely if I sit down across the table from him he's likely to excuse himself pretty quickly now John Wesley Harden happens to be have the alert edge which gives him a bonus to his notice rolls As you guys are having that conversation, you kind of, you kind of, you know, he's playing his cards, but he's taking the moment to look to search the room like any good gunslinger to make sure that there's no one, you know, approaching him from behind necessarily in one direction or another. And he stops cold, makes eye contact with you, late. Oh, hell, he's seen us. You see him kind of like put his cards down on the table. And uh, you see, he says something to the uh, the dealer and the guy begins cashing him out. So when I came in, I, I sat down. Um, I wanted to sit at the bar. Can I see mm -hmm. all of this from where I am? Can I yeah. watch? Can I see all this going on? Yep. So uh, I, I make a move to go out the front door. Like I stand like right by the front door, kind of just, you know, whittling or doing something with my hands, just kind of casually hanging out, looking around just in case he decides to come my way. Um, s s um, Harden begins to look around a little bit more, trying to see if he recognizes anybody else in the place, trying to figure out how many folks might have been, might have come here with you. I'm going to give him a second notice roll to see if he uh, spots anybody else. All right, uh, it's just a basic success still. He, um... Which means, you know, with uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a raise for him to, like, really pick up on anything else. Other, so other than Mauro, who was talking with you, doesn't really clock the other folks yet, just yet. I probably would have wandered off with Jem as well, I'd say. Kind of came in and read and brew. Um, oh, you're sitting there. A person walks up alongside, um, uh, alongside you and says, A drink for Mr. McTaggart? I kind of look over at him. He's got, a, he's got a drink and he's putting it down on the table. Who's this from? The gentleman. He points across over to Swain. Swain just kind of sits back and smiles. Did he send a message with him? No, sir. Sorry. So I'll take the drink. I'll look over uh, across the room. And uh, I'll just tell him, tell him thank you for me. 
In fact, and I give him, you know, I'll set whatever a, a glass of whiskey costs on the tray and say, give him one from me. Yeah, he takes the uh, takes your order, disappears. And a puff of smoke, ah, and fire. <laughs> no, uh, just into the crowd. And with that, um, let's see, we're rolling up on 716. Want to take a break here or play this out to uh, its inevitable conclusion? I'm good if we take a quick break. All right. We'll be back in 10. Quick. Yes. Open your eyes. We've arrived, my friends. To a place of such abundance and beauty like none have ever seen before. Misty Mountain Gaming has all you could ever need for your tabletop role-playing accessories. Metal dice, acrylic dice, dice trays, and many other tabletop role-playing accessories can be found within the halls of MistyMountainGaming.com. The forge is always hot. The tanners and tailors always working to create new and improved equipment for adventurers such as yourselves. And just for joining us on this journey, take 10% off of your entire cart with the coupon code VALOR at checkout, saving you a little extra gold for that tankard of ale waiting for you at the inn. So grab what you need and start your journey now by heading to MistyMountainGaming.com where you too can find the treasure of a lifetime. And we are back. So. Where we last left off, the folks were uh, sitting down and making a game plan on how they were going to approach John Wesley Harden and the side of the Lotus Casino. Um, when he, they were spotted by the very alert gunslinger sent over drink. Clayton McTaggart's table. And Jim Freeman, seeing the exchange, made their way over towards the front door. Clayton ordered a uh, a drink in return. Now the two of them just kind of staring each other down across the valley of the of the establishment, waiting to see who flinches first. I kind of look over at, at Morrow and and take the drink in my hand and say, well, there's no need to front now. I'll go over there with you. I'll be your huckleberry. You make your way down Bob the... Will... Hmm? Bob will lead the way. Okay. At the Almost door, I will... Pipe, uh... pipe man way, like clearing, <laughs> clearing the way for Clayton so that he doesn't need to worry about somebody that's going to step in the way and hold his either of those arms to prevent him from shooting like all right it's, it's almost crowd door, control management i will uh, lean over to jim and say if you know how clayton is and if if this uh harns even half is an itchy trigger finger i don't think they're fixing to come outside so we might not want to go in and we might want to go in and Observe in that regard. I reckon you might be right, but uh, we're gonna have to try and make some of these people leave if things do get a little hairy in here. We don't well, want to. I think the gunfire will do that for us. So I take out. Uh, I kind of, I kind of like, like take my hand off my weapon and and walk with Amy to take a closer look at what's going on with these two men. You make your way down into the valley um, between the two ridge ridges inside the Lotus and reach the railing, uh, the steps uh, up into the next one. Harden is is actually waiting for you at the staircase when you get there. It's not much of a staircase, it's a couple steps. 
He's like, Mr. McTaggart, I see you are still acting the bloodhound. When will I ever be rid of you? I'll make you a right deal. Now. How about... Yeah. How about you and me meet outside of town? And then we can decide just who's going to be rid of who. He looks around and goes... You looking to jump me with what? What you got with you now? 60 men? 70? I've got my friends. But this here, this is between us. And I'm going to keep it between us. If you want to bring a second, a third, a fourth, a sixth, you do that. But I'm looking to end this one way or another. It would be a load off my mind to know that you were in the ground, Mr. McTagg. I'll meet you out front. We'll settle it here. Once and for all. As he's walking out, I'll say... No, he doesn't you... walk out in front. He doesn't walk oh. out in front of you. He goes, he's he's not gonna let you. He's not gonna turn his back on you. He's going to. He just gestures towards the door to let you walk in front of him. So as I'll turn to walk away, I'll look at him and say, after all we've seen past few weeks, I've chased you this far. What makes you think the ground is going to keep me from hunting you down? You and with walk. that, I'll take my leave. All right. You walk out into the street. Uh, uh, as you walk past um, Jim and Amy, uh, who kind of like heading towards you from the op from the door, do you say anything? Yeah, I'll uh, stop at them. I'll leave the drink on the bar without having taken a sip of it. Mm -hmm. And I'll say to them, uh, you know, we're, I'm headed for the outskirts of town. Uh, you you guys will be able to see me. Uh, you can you can come out there if you want to, but, you know, if, if you're going to follow me outside of town, stay hidden. Uh, you got the impression when he said, no, uh, I'll, I'll end it here. I'll meet you outside. He wasn't talking about the out, uh, the skirts outskirts of town. Oh. OK. Yeah, so uh, I'll just uh, I'll look at them and and just say, you know, uh, keep your eyes on the streets. And then I'm, I'll go outside and stand uh, like back against the, the porch and wait for him to come out. Um, you guys, you, you go out there. You're up, you're up there for a man, maybe a minute or so. And all and you, the hustle and bustle, you're kind of getting used to it here, and and um, in Butte, but you see a, some folks come out of the the Lotus and kind of scatter across uh, into the crowd, and then the street seems to clear. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, uh, traffic seems to be diverting to other side streets. Like, folks know something is coming. Mo but maybe a few moments later, you can hear the music inside stop. 
you can just hear one set of footprints, uh, fo uh, one set of boot prints walking towards the door. The little shutter doors squeak as he comes strolling through. Turns to look at you. He says, any last words? Yeah, he, he lets out one, or I let out one last uh, exhale of cigar smoke, drop the cigar on the ground, and say, you're going to hang your kin. Yeah. What do I care? That I will step out onto the street. You step out into the dust and dirt uh, of Mercury Street there in front of the Lotus. Harden takes his position, you know, is uh, into the street as well. You can see groups of people begin to form kind of at the windows and behind banisters on. on either sides of the streets just kind of waiting to see the show you get the impression that maybe this happens a bit more often than you expected and I like, he squints down uh, down the lane at you he says you got any preferences for how we start this track to you down here you pick I want to hear you say you're calling me out don't want to be accused of me starting this nice and loud so everyone else can hear you you started this a long time ago and then very loudly, Clayton will declare, John Wesley Harden. I demand satisfaction. He nods. And we are going to begin a Deadlands duel. So the way this works is it's three rounds. First two rounds are uh, uh, spent acquiring action cards. Um, and then, uh, and just sizing each other up, trying to spook the other person, lay down a little bit of intimidation or taunting on the other, on the, the other combatants, trying to shake them off their game. Uh, each, you'll be get dealt a card. I'm going to deal Harden's cards face down. I'm going to deal your cards face up onto the table. And okay. then, uh, at the end of the third round, we're going to reveal... I'll reveal Harden's cards and we'll see who gets to go first. Take their shot. And I will remind you that you cannot spend a Benny on these rolls. Or can whether, plus one? Wait, you can, you can spend a Benny on the roll, right? You can't spend, you can't soak the damage is what right, I mean. Right, you can't soak the damage. All right, so. Uh... I'm going to let you, let's see, let's see, I got to, and uh, you get the real strong impression that it, it is supposed to be just between these two men and any interference from the peanut gallery will be seen as a major faux pas. As all this is going on, Jim kind of sits on the stoop, like the stairs of a building nearby and drinks through the whole the whole confrontation. Okay, I'm going to change the I you could be off uh, chasing Soil Dove. <laughs> you know, one second, I'm taking this. this um, token. I didn't take hard and 
There we go. Back into Okay. So there we go. Harden and Clayton. Uh, this card, the card I'm about to deal is just to determine who gets to go, who's going first. And we're going to stick with that order uh, for the next, uh, for the next three rounds as time begins to slow down and you eye each other from across the, uh, the street. Harden pulls the high card. He stares at you. So first and says, uh, and he squints and says, you know, boy, I'll admit it. You got guts and I intend to see him spewed out here on the street. Makes his intimidation roll against you. With a five. You okay. must resist that. The spirit roll? Uh, uh, yes, that is correct. Gotcha. That is a success. So, uh, let's see. Let's steal cards the here, that's not what I want. I want to. He's got to meet or beat that in opposed. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got to meet or beat. Yeah, that's right. Not, so, yeah, I, I, saw the, success, I, saw, but... I saw the the five and I, I forgot that he had the wound penalty there. And I wasn't looking at the actual result. So, that is only a four. That is not a success. Would you like to spend, take a plus one to make that a success? Yeah, I'll take a plus one. Okay. So, that, that meets it, which means you, uh, uh, he does not beat you. You get no ill effect from him from his intimidation this round. He draws a card. Turn. Reset the deck here. Shuffle. Okay. Alright. So your go. Alrighty. Uh, so with that, I'll say, remember what I said, Harden. Ain't no grave gonna hold me. And with that, I will roll Intimidation. Five. Minus one is four. Happy with that? I want to spend a many and try and see if you can do better. Um, I will spend one of my bennies to see if I can do a little bit better. Okay. Oh yes, you can. Well spent. Yeah. Well Very spent good. indeed. Fourteen. All right, resisted by his spirit. A 10, which is not a 14. So you still beat him with a raise, um, which allows you to make him both distracted and vulnerable, I believe, because you can't shake a person in this. Right. You see, um, you see Harden kind of begin to look worried. You see beads of sweat beginning to form on his brow. Round two. Uh, yeah, I, f I forgot. Um, oh, well, what does it matter? See, you guys, after that tail telling, I said I was going to give you guys bennies, but in the actual rules, it's you get conviction. So I'm going to make sure that you get that conviction there as well uh, that's what you get for tail telling and, and conviction conviction only lasts for one round right yeah that's right okay but if you spend a benny it refreshes until the next round after yeah you can keep it going okay gotcha. um Harden begins beads of sweat begin to uh 
roll up on his forehead and his eyes squint and you can see him get a little twitchy and he goes kill all your friends I can kill you too you you may think you're fast but you ain't faster than me Ooh, a two, a two. He's gonna spend a penny and try and do that and try and do better. His voice. No, nope, his voice still cracks as he tries. As he, uh, he seems less certain. Uh, he only rolls a three. Um. So I'm not gonna make you roll to beat it. He doesn't succeed on his intimidation roll. You're up, though. And with that, I'll I'll do another intimidation mm -hmm. and say, you've only killed some of my friends. The rest of them, they're still here. And if you get me, this doesn't end. No, this doesn't end until you are the one lying on the ground. And with that, mm. I will roll another intimidation. Or right, actually, hang on. Real quick. Um, I gave him, I gave you, um, I forgot, well, last round I forgot to, one, give you a card. And because you beat him with a raise, I, I assume to give you both distracted and vulnerable, but you could actually choose one or the other and take an extra card for your. Um, let's see. Uh, so I, I would make him vulnerable and uh, take the extra card. And then I've got the duelist edge. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if that gives me it says I get two extra hole cards at the start of the throwdown. Is that when guns are drawn? Um, I think no, it's like uh, at the top of it. So it's you right here. Had so, already. Yeah, I should give you the, those cards right now. Uh, as So let, let's see. So you should have two extra cards plus the one you got plus an extra one. So you should have four cards on the table right now. Yep. Okay. We're going to do that real quick. Uh, draw the table. Four cards. Queen of Clubs, Jack of Clubs, Nine of Clubs, Ten of Clubs. <laughs> I swear I hit shuffle. <laughs> that, that is way... Wow. <laughs> that is statistically unlikely. I only want the high cards, so... Green's yeah. good. Alright, so uh, roll the intimidation from what I said. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna Benny that. Take a party if you need. There's plenty of them. Yeah, I'll take a party, Benny, for that one. So let's go ahead. Should I go ahead and re-roll? Uh, I just click the um. Oh, your party, Benny. Click the yeah, the re-roll button. There you go. All right. Four. Four. That is a success. Um, so he uh, attempts to resist. With a three after... Um, wait, what? He's vulnerable. He ain't, uh, he ain't distracted anymore. I'm not sure why he's got that. Yeah, he's not... Uh, a distracted might oh a distracted is still checked on it up there i thought i removed it okay so that's so that is a five that he um the, he resists your second intimidation attempt there so you don't get to put any other effects on it okay all right so now and then that so that was round two we're now mm -hmm. in the third round and we reveal the high cards of both of both duelists and the first and the person with the higher card goes first and your high card being the 
Queen of Clubs. And John Wesley Harden is high card being Five of Hearts. Alrighty. And this time I will uh, use my conviction. Mm -hmm. And uh, is this the open fire round or are we still... Uh, no, each other the, down. no, no, this is the round where you, you know, basically it's you can choose to let him draw first and then interrupt him. Um, or you can just draw and shoot. But um, he's about, he, he, on his card, that's what he's doing. Gotcha. And I've got a plus two to interrupt him uh, from my quick draw holster. But I, you know what? I, Clayton's bloodthirsty. He's just going to draw and shoot. All right. So make sure you're targeting him so we get all the fancy effects. Yep. As soon as it seems that, that things are have reached that boiling point, I'm pulling up... Uh, I'm going to pull up the rifle and just kind of have it. Maybe not fully up in yeah, shoulder, yeah. but it's it's getting ready to snap. It's in your snap. hand. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's ready. Keep it going. Oh my. Uh, that's a hit and a raise as you quit nice. as you draw first and a flash of lightning. Roll damage. All right. Nice. 11. That was uh, plus 21. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Yeah. What, what, I was, oh, I was the conviction roll. Was 11. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry. I was distracted. Three wounds. Um, and he cannot soak it. So, um, he gets hit and staggers back, but he's not down. Uh, he is shaken, however, and must first roll to unshake. Um, he pulls the gun out of its hole out of his holster, but he is unable to get a shot off. Um, Oh, hang on. Let's see. Let's. I'm gonna spend a Benny. So he does. Pulls it out. He seems like like he's almost not gonna get the shot, but um, he shakes his 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 eyes and then aims down and fires back at you. He's hurt bad, but he is destined to put the hurt down on you as well. All right. Hit with a raise. Oh, the worst damage. Oh, wow. Oh, man. The bullet bounces off. Your sh it hits you square in the chest. And and you're like, and you're like shocked as a moment. And you feel, you see the bullet land into the dust. You look down at the, the, the pocket where it slammed into it. And you realize that's where you put the badge. <laughs> I love it. Classic. And we drop out of the dueling rounds and into a straight up gunfight. Uh, I'm not lo rolling out the, uh, not rolling out the uh, map for this. Um, There's pretty much people standing, ducking for cover as bolts begin flying in every direction. Uh, and we're just going to deal. And if, are you folks going to stay out of it there on the sidelines or are you going to jump in? Does it look like there's anyone else getting involved or is it? It is not. Okay. Um, I mean, you can deal me in just to, to maybe be on standby, but okay. if no one else comes to Harden's aid, then as far as it looks like, Clayton's got it. All right, so I'll deal, I'll deal in you a card. Anybody want on, else want to be dealt a card? I respect the man's wishes. He's going to stay out of it. Let him fight his fight. I think Bob, Bob does as well. Like his, his sight lines are looking towards anyone else that's interfering, and no one has. So this is this looks fair to him. All right. In that case, uh, next round. Clayton, you pulled nice. the black joker. All righty. Well timed. So with that, uh, basically just, you know, with with no uh, no pretense or anything like that, I'm just going to point my gun 
right at him and say, oh, hell, I'll do it. That is a hit with a raise yet again. And I would have, uh, since it added the conviction, I'll spend the Benny to keep conviction going. Oh, right, yeah. So that'll take me down to three. Put that on the table. And roll my raise damage. And the, with that, um, you, the second shot, describe what happens. Four more wounds going into John Wesley Harden. So I imagine this one would, uh, Clayton would be going for like right between the eyes just to put him down for good. Only way to be sure, destroy the brain. Yep. <laughs> Double tap. <laughs> Need to burn the corpse. Uh, Harden collapses into the dust. He's saying something. You can see his jaw working, but at this distance, no one can understand what he's saying. Just mumbling and getting a face full of dirt. With that, the fever seems to break in the street. You've seen it here, folks. Fastest two guns here, this side of the city. Mr. Clayton McTaggart always gets his man. Now, please, please, if you'd like to come see more of his spectacular gun slinging, we'll maybe be in town for another show for a few days. It only cost you one measly nickel. I'm Amy Haddock. Mr. Clayton's manager, just come. Let me know if you'd like to see the show. The crowd seems to like begin to slowly break apart. The the people who uh, uh, on the front porch of the the Lotus kind of come out and they they roll over uh, John Wesley Harden in the dirt, haul him up. And you see uh, somebody comes walking from around the side of the building with a coffin. Prop it up against the wall and throw his body into it. Lean him up against the wind, uh, against the front of the building. As they're doing this, I'm going to uh, like hold up a hand and say, hold up a minute. And I'll walk over to the guy with the coffin. and say, them two guns of his took the lives of my friends. What's it gonna take for you to look the other way if I take those? Give me an intimidation roll. Just wanna see how basically intimidating you are at this moment. All right, guy goes. The guy uh, does not want to get into a uh, conflict with you at the moment. He, after seeing what you just did, he just kind of points to the, uh, he, he kind of points to him. He says, he says, they're yours. So I'll, I'll take his, uh, his thunderer and his lightning. And then with that, four of you kind of look towards each other without any other further business next train to Missoula is tomorrow morning so Clayton what do you say is this uh, let's put you at the piece you're looking for
Clayton thinks for a minute. I don't reckon so. But he walks over and, and kind of puts a hand on Amy's shoulder. He says... But I think we can find it. I hope you do, my friend. I hope you do. The camera pulls away down the long street, the line off back through the city of Butte turning slowly over the hills and the mountains of Montana into the deep, dark forests of Hellgate. Somewhere in the distance, the sun begins to set. That, folks, is the end of book one of the Hellgate Trilogy. Hell yeah.